please stand as we're going to worship the Lord together. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give Jesus a good praise.
who's willing to say there's no one like you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Welcome to this Saturday night of summer camp meeting where Jesus is alive. Can you say amen? Where Jesus is on the move. Hallelujah. Well, you guys sound like you came ready, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. And I, I tell you, we got a group of people pulling on the anointing, that's for sure. So it's a night of the fulfillment of the power of God for everything you need. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm going to do some quick announcements and go right back into uh, praise and worship. Of course, here we are Saturday night. We want to thank Family Worship Center, Pastors Reggie, Miss B, the entire staff of this great church for everything they've done throughout this entire week. And, of course, we finish up tonight here at Family Worship Center in Lakeland, and then we move back over to Tampa for the river at Tampa Bay, the River Church tomorrow morning and tomorrow night, and then, of course, those from Family Worship Center here, right here at your church. But it's just been an awesome, awesome week, and I know that we're going to hear many testimonies of what the Lord's done this entire week. And then also a couple quick guidelines. Please don't lay hands on anybody. Please don't take any pictures or have any recording equipment. We'd appreciate that. No chewing gum or anything like that in the sanctuary, just water. And then also we have Revival Ministries International Ministerial Association, R-M-I-M-A for short. If you're interested in licensing or ordination, uh, you can raise your hand. We have those brochures. We can get you more information on that. And then also who's been to Revival.com before? Okay, who's been there a couple times? Okay, you guys know we work really hard on updating our front page, and we put pictures up, and all of our videos are video on demand. You can go to webcast, and then there's a drop-down box that says video on demand. We want to welcome everybody watching by way of Revival.com right now and TV. And then many things on there. You need to keep watching the itinerary. It, it changes at an ever-increasing pace. I usually find out what's on it when pastor preaches. So, uh... No, I'm just... <laughs> anyways, that's like a, a private, now public joke. But uh, anyways, um, many things coming up that you will soon find out about. But a couple things that are for sure coming up is we have the River Bible Institute Week of Revival coming up. The week we have the River Bible Institute, the River School of Worship, and the River School of Government which is going to be starting here August 18th. And then that week right after that is an RBI week of revival. It's going to be awesome. And then also that same week we start what we call Celebrate America camp meeting up in Silver Spring, Maryland. And then there's also a, a one-night event. Dr. Ronnie Howard Brown's at in Orlando. Then he, I heard he's going to Palm Coast for a night, possibly Atlanta, Georgia, going to D.C. and many other things that – that you'll find out about if you go to Revival.com in the next few days. You'll see all of those and many other things coming up. And then our Ministers Conference and Leaders Conference in October. Our Ministers and Leaders Conference is always in October and in May. And then also, if you're not a soul-saving station and you'd like to be one, you can raise your hand or go to Revival.com, those that are watching. Soul-saving station, you know, your life has to count for eternity. Can you say Amen. God has specifically positioned you where you are to win souls. If you want more information, you can go back out in the book table. We'll give you more information about that also. And then also, who was able to see the Washington, D.C. Celebrate America videos? At least you were able to see it on CTN, Christian Television Network, or Revival.com. You know, all of those are up on video on demand also on Revival.com. So you can even share them and get the, get the word out about what happened in D.C. And, of course, we're going back to D.C. here in a few weeks. And then uh, I'm going to give us some product out. And go back by the book tables. Our last night here, take Revival home with you. Maybe when I announce something, you can think about somebody you'd like to bless. This is by his stripes. Who needs a healing in your body? You need a healing. Okay, great. There's only like six people here. This is phenomenal. I knew this is, a, this is awesome, man. It's been a great week. Paul, I'll give it to you. You can come down here. Uh, that wasn't a word of knowledge. I know who he is. But this is a, a, a CD. Pastor Ronnie shares scriptures throughout the entire word of God. By his stripes ye were made whole. 
you know, the word of God, nothing is impossible with God. So you can get the, you can, you can speak the word over your situation, not what you're feeling. Can you say, man, you got to feed your spirit, man. Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of God. It isn't until you go through something and you see what comes out of your mouth to see what you're filled with. Hello. And you, you want to hope that the word comes out. Amen. And that's what needs to come out. Amen. And then this is the touch of God on the anointing. How to increase the anointing, how to transfer the anointing, how to release the anointing, the doctrine of laying on of hands. Hallelujah. Well, the last night in the arms back. Boom, right there. Look at that. Go get that. It's called the touch of God, all on the anointing. And this is the joy of the Lord is your strength. All right, that's yours, ma'am. It's yours right there. We'll bless you with that. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Go back and get that gozo de Dios. Amen. The joy of the Lord. Then this one right here is probably our best-selling DVD in all the world. It's called The Realms of God, The Night the Angel Song Sang. The Night the Angel Sang. No music, no choir, no band, and the most heavenly sound rolls in the room for over 30 minutes. It's called The Night the Angel Sang. Who, who does not have this? You know, on the road, when I announce this, in one night it sells out. I'm not kidding you. No matter how many we bring... Usually, when I'm, we're somewhere else in, the, in, in a different state, it sells out that night. And uh, I'm telling you, this is, this is just an amazing... I mean, skeptics need to watch this. I mean, it just rolls right in the place. Who really, really, really wants it? All right, my friend, it's yours. Okay. All right. You need to get that. It's called The Realms of God. I watched that before I ever came into the ministry. I watched that video, and the power of God smacked me right in my living room. You need to get that. My wife's, my mother-in-law watched that. She's Lutheran and got hit by the power of God. <laughs> As she was sewing. Come on, man. I mean, that's, you need to get it. Amen. It's called the realms of God. The night the angels sang. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then this is a revival video iPod. It's a 160 gigabyte video iPod. And it has over all close to $5,000 worth of product on it. And you can go back by the book table, get this. Who likes technology? It's really cool. Do you, do you know you can plug this right into your TV? It becomes like a DVD or VCR. You can plug it into a projector. And it's got, if you turn it on and rain it 24 hours a day, it would take 22 days and you would not watch or listen to the same thing twice. Who would like this one? Wow, you guys are here for the first time. I know, I can tell. Because it's the only thing I can't give away, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. I do. And I can't give it away. But uh, you can go back by the book table. And the last thing I want to say is the River Bible Institute. I want to thank God for the River Bible Institute, the River School of Worship, and the River School of Government. I mean, it's a Holy Ghost boot camp training up special forces. I mean, if you really, really, really want your life to count, you got to call a God on your life then you need to come to the River Bible Institute, the River School of Worship, or the River School of Government. In nine months, it's one year, two years, or three years, it, you know, you just need to set that time aside and plug in to the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and you will come out special forces. We could not do what we do without the River Bible Institute, the River School of Worship, and the River School of Government. I'm telling you, who in here is a Bible school graduate of one of those three colleges? Look at that. Give them a great God bless you. I got my hand up. I graduated charter class of the River Bible Institute, me and my wife, and it's phenomenal. We're going to show you a little video, but I want you to stand to your feet right now. If you want more information on the school, it starts August 18th. You still got plenty of time to change your life. I got called in the summer camp meeting. I had the exact same amount of time to give everything away and leave everything. So, I mean, if God's calling you to do it, then it isn't until you take a step of, a, of obedience. It isn't until you say, okay, and you take a step forward that anything moves. Nothing moves until you move. It's the way it works. So if you're interested in Bible college, raise your hand. We'll get you one more, uh, give you a form. We got a, a course out at the uh, lobby. We can answer all of your questions. But let's watch this. And then right when the video stops, we're going to go right back into praise and worship. But just say this. Say, tonight is my night. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty for a miracle. Tonight, Tonight is my night. My night. Neighbor, Neighbor, give me a little room. All right, watch this.
kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on.
Oh, ma, 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 ma. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Huh. You know, uh, religious people, they, they can't understand how that you can have meetings like this every day, twice a day. It, it can't comprehend it. But it's just like when people in the world, they go out and party every night. They think nothing about that. And then they come to church, looks like God died. <laughs> then we're attending a funeral. We expect a coffin at any moment to be rolled out. Listen, no one's going to die here tonight. Un unless your name's Ananias and your wife's name's Fire. <laughs> no one's going to die. But people are going to live, can you say, man? The life of God. Oh, hallelujah. I promise you when, you, when you get on the other side, you don't gonna hold nothing back, man. When you get on the other side, you're going to be totally unrestrained. Some of the things that stop you from worshiping down the air. You know, some say, well, I'll wait till that happens. You know what my Bible says? Blessed are those that have not seen yet believed. Uh, we, do, we do this and we haven't even seen. And we believed. Can you say amen? amen? What a mighty God we serve. Amen. And it never gets old. It never gets boring. Never, ever, ever. I've been in, I literally have been in thousands upon thousands of these meetings and I've never walked out and gone, oh no, not in one of those meetings again. <laughs> never, Brother Reggie, never, ever. I've been amongst a couple of religious people I wished I wasn't amongst, but the problem is never with God. Can you say amen? Why don't you turn and greet you with three people and just tell them you love them, Jesus loves them. God have your way. Sanama Bari Pakas of Tolomo for Penny and Betanamo Hondo Saparadisto Profond Elysia. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want Pastor Alan to come up here. And um, the other night, you know, we got to have many of the little ones share. And God's really doing something amongst the youth. And it's just phenomenal to see the fire of God on them. And especially when it comes to the schools, as we're invading all the schools, and we just purpose that a hard when we do this. So go ahead and greet the people, tell them what's happening, and then get a couple of the young people up here. Well, I'm excited to be here with you tonight at Family Worship Center. How many guys are excited for this week? How many of you guys have been with us all week long? Can I see your hand? Having a, this has been an amazing week. And you know, one of the things that I'm so excited about is that we're living in a day and a time that's a very exciting time to be alive. And, and what I'm more excited about is that, I, of course, I love my pastor and I'm thankful because one of the things that he has released us to do is to fulfill the call of God on our life. But I'll tell you, several years ago, when I first became the youth pastor, I remember, you know, being a bit frustrated because I'm trying to figure out what it is that youth ministry is all about. And, and, and I remember one day walking into a staff meeting and the Lord speaking to me and saying this, Alan, if you don't support the vision of your senior pastor, then you're causing division. 
And it was at that moment that I made a decision that whatever his heart was, whatever it is that God had placed as a mandate on his life and on his ministry, that I was going to do the exact same thing. And that's when the Lord spoke to us and said that you were to take the same message that he's taken to the world in revival and the power of God and the demonstration of the power of God and and to see a harvest of souls come in to take that into our high schools and our middle schools. And since that day to this one, God has given us extreme favor on our school campuses. And when I say extreme favor, let me tell you what's happened. Now, last year when we were here, Pastor, we told everybody, as you know, that we were in all of our schools in Hillsborough County, our high schools, our middle schools. But this year was really kind of special because uh, really a couple of months ago, I got a phone call from Pastor Daniel. He said, where are you? And I told him and he said, well, listen, I need you to meet me right now to come meet me at a local restaurant. I got to the local restaurant. There was a man sitting there at lunch. Now, this man, his name is D. Franks. D. Happy is to be a, uh, an ordained Church of God youth pastor, but he also happens to work for FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And they began to tell us that in their own study, they began to find that in our district of 12 high schools, which is the 12 high schools that we are most involved in in our district, we found out that there are, or they found out on their own without even speaking to us. They did not know us. They are, well, they knew who we were, but they didn't know what we were doing. But they found out that there are more teenagers being born again in that 12 high school district. Now, watch this than any other place in the nation that they are currently polling. That means that right now in Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County is the eighth, is the third largest school district in the, in the, in the state of Florida and is the eighth largest in the United States. Of America. And right now, just in 12 high schools, we are seeing more young people born again in our lo- local high school and middle schools than anywhere else in the nation that they're polling right now. And what's so cool about that is that not long after that, when D turned in his yearly numbers to his head office, he got a phone call from his head guy. And he said, D, you know, you you reported X amount of souls being saved here. He said, could you just kind of walk me through what that looks like? And I said, yeah, sure, not a problem. He, so, I'm sorry, he said that, yeah, no problem. So he began to tell him exactly what we do when we go out every single week to our local high schools, how we're leading people to the Lord and, and what's happening. And, and at the end of the conversation, the head of this great organization said to him, he said, well, sounds to me like we need to revisit all of our policies of how we're reaching students in our local schools. As a youth ministry, we've now seen over 30,000 decisions recorded for the Lord Jesus Christ in our local high schools and our college campuses. But I'll tell you this, the Lord said to raise up a generation of young leaders. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 7 through verse 8, here you have Moses who's not going to be able to go to the promised land, and he calls Joshua, and this is what he says, be strong and very courageous. He said, for you shall take these people to the land in which their father has sworn to give to them. And he says, and you shall cause them to inherit it. He said, but be strong, for the Lord is the one who will go before you. He will always be with you. With you, He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. And I'll tell you this, the reason why I bring that up today is because young person, I want you to know God is calling you to be the very one to cause your generation to inherit the promises of God. It's not for 10 years from now. It's not for 10 months from now. It's not for 10 days from now. It's for today. God has called you for such a time as this. Stop saying, wait till I'm in my 20s, into my 30s, and when I'm married, have children. Why can't God use you? now why can't he use you now why can't he not use you now so we began to train up our young people to really if you look at it to be missionaries to their local schools because we told them the word of God said in Joshua chapter 1 Joshua knew there were giants in the land he knew that the promised land they were about to take was not easy but he also knew that the Lord told him that every place that the sole of your foot shall tread I've given it to you. And so I begin to tell our students, when you go to your high schools and you step on the ground, you say, Lord, this is a school you've given to me. This is the ground that belongs to you, Lord. And, and what has happened has been an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. So today I have a couple of our students that I thought I wanted to give an opportunity to tell you what God is doing in their life. Because I'll tell you this right now. I love being a youth pastor. I love the opportunity to travel and to speak. I love that opportunity. But the greatest, one of the greatest joys that I've got, and I'm sure Pastor Rodney, you're the same. One of the 
greatest joys that we have as youth pastors is not just to say, hey, I preached at such and such conference. One of the greatest joys is to see our young people raise up to do things greater than what we do. And I'm talking from a young age. I'm so thankful for being in a church where we know the anointing. So enough for me. I want you guys to hear what D says. Let me just say, he just got back before D.C. because they helped us, him and his wife, the whole time in D.C. But he just got back from Africa and did a major youth conference here and broadcast by his satellite across the whole continent. Yes, sir. And, I mean, there was millions of homes. It was amazing. This yeah. is the second time we've done this conference, and it was amazing. Yeah. So I'm excited about what God's doing with them. I'm excited, too. <laughs> well, guys, take it away. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Well, I was asked to, uh, to speak about the fire of God and what it's done for me and what it's done in my life for the next few minutes. And I want to start out just to quote a line from an old hymn, uh, Thou art the potter, I am the clay. And what I feel is that's really how, in my experience of the fire of God, is I've submitted myself. It's, it's come and it's molded me and it's shaped me into something God can use. And I wanted to encourage you tonight to let God do that to you, to let the fire come and shape you and mold you. As I've submitted to the fire, it's started to burn out what the Bible calls wood, hay, and stubble, all the stuff that God can't use, and at least behind gold, what God can use. And I encourage you, let the fire come. Let it burn out all that wood, hay, and stubble, all the stuff can't, God can't do with you, and let Him use you tonight. Let the fire come and burn out all the stuff you can't use so you can be a gold vessel for him to put his best through. Um, 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 21, it talks about in a house you'll find gold vessels, silver vessels, clay vessels, earthen vessels. Basically today's equivalent, it would be like in your house you have your fine china dishes, which you only use on special occasions. And then you have, you know, your paper plates and your everyday plates that you eat off of all the time. You know, like, um, and uh, it says, that uh, it uses the word purge in that verse, to purge yourself from sin. So you can be a gold vessel and a silver vessel, something that God can put his best in so you can, so God, so you can pour out God's best from you. You have to let the fire of God rule your life. You have to let the fire of God be part of every decision you make. I remember praying a prayer back in um, a few years ago when I was still in the children's ministry, an amazing children's ministry we have at the River Church. And as hands were laid upon me in that service, I asked God, let your fire rule in my life. Amen. And you know, I want to encourage you to pray that same exact prayer tonight. Let his fire rule in your life so he can use you. And I'm telling you, once the fire gets in, he will use you in ways that will blow your mind. You can never imagine. He's done that to me. Uh, I was able to go up to Washington, D.C. with Pastor Rodney. And I, I'm just saying, I'm not bragging on myself. But God was able to use me in such a way, it blew my mind. I was able to go to the Senate offices and start winning the office staff and the Senate to the Lord. I was able to... I'm 14 years old. And that's not bragging on me. That's saying what the fire of God has done in me is I've submitted myself to it. And God can do that and even better for you. But before you pray that prayer, I'm just going to warn you. Once you have the fire of God, you're not going to fit in. You're not, you're not going to be able... You're not going to be able just to fit in with the crowd. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. You're going to get persecuted for having this fire. So if you just want to be a pew warmer, if you want to do nothing to shake America, if you want to do nothing to change this world, you don't want to pray that prayer. But if you want to be part of the shaking of America, if you want to be part of the next great awakening, you have to ask God for this fire because without this fire, without this fire, you cannot do anything. Without this fire, you'll just be a Sunday morning Christian. Without this fire, you cannot have the power the power of God. And that's what's going to shake America. So tonight, I encourage you, pray that prayer. Ask God for His fire. Cry out for His fire. Because He will send it. God is a God that answers by fire. So I encourage you, pray that prayer tonight. Consecrate yourself. Let the fire come into your life and change your life. So God can pour out through you.
Hey, uh, I'm Eddie. Um, I'm just going to give a testimony about what the fire has done through my life. Um, I come from the UK, um, but first of all, I just want to say, where does the fire come from? Luke 3.16, um, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So don't let anyone tell you that the fire does not come from Jesus. The fire comes directly from Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I grew up in a very sheltered Christian home uh, with great godly parents who taught me biblical principles from an early age. But I went to public school. And I don't know what public schools are like in, in the U.S., but in the U.K., they're, they're not nice places. And I found myself learning Christian principles at home and worldly principles out in public school. I found myself eventually leading a double life at home. I was the great little Christian kid. And at public school, I was the kid that just wanted to fit in. Now, I didn't do anything extreme, but my heart was not right. My heart was not for Jesus. And it was when my mom pulled me out of public school and into homeschool, she started seeing all this stuff coming out of me. And let me tell you right now, it was the fire that burned that out of me. It was when I recommitted my life to Jesus and I got filled with the fire that I started to notice things. I started to notice that I talked differently. I didn't talk the way I used to talk anymore. I started to see things differently. I started to see lost souls, not people. I would see a hobo sitting on the side of the road and I wouldn't ignore him. I wouldn't just pretend I didn't have any cash in my pocket. I would see a lost soul. I would go preach to him because I have what he needs. He thinks he needs cash. He needs more than cash. He needs Jesus. And I would give him Jesus. I would lead him to Jesus. I noticed I didn't hang out with the same people. I didn't want to fit in with the world anymore. I wanted to be set apart and consecrated for God to use. I noticed that I didn't want to even listen to the same music. Before I used to love things like the Beatles. I didn't, I, when I found that I really got on fire for the Lord, I didn't want to listen to the Beatles anymore. I didn't want that. I wanted pure anointed worship music to listen to. And I noticed most importantly, my heart changed. My heart changed. I had a heart now for the Lord that wanted what God wants. I, saw, I wanted, wanted souls. I wanted to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I wanted to cast out demons. I wanted to preach the gospel. And let me tell you something right now. When you get the fire, you won't talk the same. You won't walk the same. You won't act the same. You won't dress the same. You won't be the same. You can't go to the places you used to go to. You don't want to. You just want a heart after Jesus. So let me tell you that right now. You need to get on fire, because it has changed my life. I'm telling you right now, but as George said, that's my brother, as George said, you, you won't be the same. You won't fit in. But let me tell you right now, it's the best thing you will ever do. The fire of God is the best thing that will ever happen to you, besides salvation, right now. Come on, hallelujah, give God praise. Turn my audio on. Turn my audio on. I'm 18 years old. Uh -huh. Well, tonight is the same fire of God. Well, I just, Hebrews twelve twenty nine says our God is a consuming fire, and that re that scripture really stuck out because it's crazy. Because I referred to the scripture that says those that know their God shall do exploit in His name, and our God is a consuming fire. So you have to have the fire of God. You know, I was thinking about this. It hit me really hard. Like Christianity would be the same as every other religion without the fire of God. I mean, the fire of God is the power. It's the reality that Jesus is alive. I mean, come on. <laughs> and what I was thinking, um, yield, yield. It's simple as that. People ask you, oh, I just want to get touched by the fire. It's as simple as yielding your heart and just say, God, I want your fire. Just touch me right now with the fire of God. You know, the fire of God is not just a feeling. It's not just some reaction, but it's the flame to the fox's tail. It's the thing that makes you run harder. It's the thing that makes you go to tell people about Jesus because you see with new eyes, you see with a new whole perspective because the fire of God is what will change your life. And just as they says, you, you're not gonna be the same. But you know, what do you have to lose? Your pride? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? You're, you're actually advancing when you yield to the, to the fire of God. And the fire of God will burn out and change you in so many ways. I mean, I wouldn't be standing here seven years ago. I mean, we came from this church that said was spirit-filled, but you know, it wasn't. And we came here and our whole lives changed. And <laughs> it's amazing what God can do through you. I, 
six years ago, I would never think that I would be standing on this stage preaching to you guys. But that's because the fire of God has changed my life. And I want to encourage you tonight that this can happen to you. You don't have to sit in the pew anymore and look like you're just sitting there, but God can read you up and you can be a voice in your generation. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> myself would we would not be the same so I just encourage you guys yield to the fire of God because it's just the beginning of what God is doing in you it's just the beginning because God has so much for you he has so much for you so just yield and just keep pressing in for more so tell them how old you are I'm 15 years old hi my name's Sarah Sue <laughs> And I just want to begin by thanking Pastor Rodney and Pastor Allen and how amazing examples they are to all of us. Okay. So on, I believe it was Wednesday night when you were talking about your relationship with the Lord, you know, when I began to think about it and coming from Pastor Rodney, you know, his whole ministry is based on his relationship with the Lord. Think of Brother Hagen, how, what the legacy that he left us, the books that are still ministering to us today. His whole ministry is based on his relationship with the Lord and one man hearing from God. It's so important that you develop a relationship with the Lord. And it's so important that the word is your foundation. You know, when I realize that what I put in me is what God has to work with to use me, the word in my life became greater understanding. Amen? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> it's really funny because, you know, I grew up under this ministry and I really didn't want to come to Bible school. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it was a, um, it was winter camp meeting. It was a Thursday night and I was sitting in the second section of the second section, four seats over on the third row. And, <laughs> and <laughs> Pastor Rodney was talking about the vision for the next three years and I just began to weep. And that I just had, I just knew inside of me that if I didn't come to school, that I was going to miss what God had for me. And ever since that service, I had such an excitement to come to Bible school. And just recently, I was talking to some girls from California, and they were asking me a lot of different questions about school. And I, when this came out of me, I was like, wow, that's powerful. Like, <laughs> you know, you really don't realize what's in you until it comes out of you. So... I was talking to these girls and I was like, you know, when you come to Bible school, you're going to learn the spirit of excellence, you're going to learn character, you're going to learn ethics, and you're going to learn how to conduct yourself as a minister. But the anointing and the touch of God on your life, you don't get that because you decide to come to Bible school. You get that from your relationship with the Lord. You get that because you're hungry, because you're thirsty, because you say, Lord, use me. I am absolutely nothing. Lord, use me. <laughs> You know, isn't the Lord so great? <laughs> isn't he just like cool? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's just so beautiful. You know, there's no words to describe his beauty. There's no words in our vocabulary that are worthy to describe his majesticness. And you know, last year in school, um, the Lord dealt with me about this. And you know, especially camp meeting, you guys can kind of understand. Um, we have two services a day, as you know, but before every service, you know, as a girl, we kind of spend like 45 minutes to an hour getting ready, right? And you can kind of do that like two hours a day because so, we have two services. So, <laughs> right? So I was just like, and I just felt so convicted. And I was just like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Here I am spending two hours a day getting ready to become beautiful for others. And I'm not even spending that with you to come be become beautiful with you on the inside. And you know, it really hit me because you know that scripture in 2 Corinthians where it says the outward man perishes? You know, I stand before you today and I'm alive, but my body is dying. I'm becoming closer to death every second, right? So I'm like, Lord, I don't, my heart's cry now is, Lord, I don't want to be pretty for others on the outside, but I want to be beautiful for you on the inside because my spirit goes on to eternity, live forever with Jesus. Amen. So. 
You know, when we first found out that we were going to be speaking today, I was really praying in my car about, you know, what I was going to say. And I was just kind of talking it out of what was in my heart. And I just began to say this. And again, I was like, whoa, that's powerful. <laughs> right? And I just, I just spoke out. I was just like, I just, I just saw this island in the middle of the ocean. And these two currents on either side of the island. And one current was going towards Jesus and the other wasn't. And it reminded me of our generation and how complacent and lukewarm our generation is. But let me tell you, there's no middle ground. That island doesn't exist. You're running to Jesus or you're running to the devil. There's no place that you are safe. <laughs> and I just want to encourage you all today <laughs> because you all have a purpose and you all have a plan. And I know for me, whenever I'm, you know, put in a position to do a work or to minister to people, I have to remind myself, you know, the Lord put me here because he had confidence in me to do the job before I had in myself. Amen. And you're all a part of this generation. And you all have calls of God on your life that God saw before you were born. It tells us in Jeremiah that he had thoughts towards you when you were... <laughs> that he had thoughts towards you in your mother's womb before you were even formed. He placed that call of God on you before you were even formed, before your mother gave birth to you because he had confidence in you that you would, that you would, that you would fulfill the call of God on your life. So you need to have the confidence in yourself. And this generation is running out of time. It's a complacent, lukewarm generation. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be vomit. Because my Bible tells me that he will spew the lukewarm out of his mouth. So you need to decide where you're going to be today. If you're going to run towards Jesus or if you're going to run to the devil. Amen? Yeah, she, she's a revival baby, uh, Richard Moore. He was here last night. That's his daughter. And so she's been from when she's calling in the meetings. So very radical. Amen. Obviously won't fit into religious church at all. <laughs> you know, you'll notice something about all, all of these people, just the fire. And somebody said, well, how do you get the fire into them? You have to preach it into them. You have to preach the fire into people. You can lay hands on them, but if you don't preach it in, it won't go in. Because it's the word of God. That's like a fire that burns. Amen. Where are you, Richard? There he is. Come here, brother. That's your baby, man. You, 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 you might as well just retire. <laughs> I think, um, I think you could just travel and let her preach. Oh, if you want to play golf in the morning, I'll slap you. <laughs> Greet the people. Tell them what the Lord's doing. Come. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Is he? Hallelujah. You know, I tell, I tell you this. Everything you need tonight is here. 
Everything you have need of tonight in your life is here. You don't have to leave here tonight without a touch from heaven. If you leave here tonight without a touch from God, it's your fault. Because the presence of God is here. The knowing of God is here. And there's only one ingredient that it takes in order to have an encounter with God. And that is you have to be hungry. That's all it takes is you have to be hungry. And I know you're hungry because you're here on a Saturday night. And uh, I, I, can, I can tell you this, is that I, I don't have enough time to tell you exactly <laughs> what's happening and what's happened over the years, you know, what, what the Lord did in my life. But I can tell you this, is that... <clears throat> what happened when the fire came on you? You know, I, um, I actually said to the Lord in, um, after five years of ministry, you know, I, 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 didn't, I wanted to get out of the ministry. And not because I was angry at the Lord, just because nothing was happening. And, uh, you know, when you go around the country and you're an evan you know, evangelist is supposed to get people saved. Well, there was nobody getting saved. And, um, and nobody was getting healed. And, you know, it's not, you know, you don't go very far and you're not very successful when you have a healing ministry with no miracles. And uh, so I, I actually wanted out of the ministry, not, not because I was angry at the Lord. That's, that's not, not the case. I wanted out because nothing was happening. I was tired of going to service, doing meetings and getting up behind the pulpit and preaching on the fire of God, preaching on the miracle, preaching on miracles, preaching on, you know, the, the glory of God and nothing happening. And so I said, Lord, let me just out of the ministry. You know, I grew up in a racing family. My, my family drove race cars for a living. And, and I grew up at the racetrack for 15 years of my life. I, was, I lived at the racetrack, and that was my dream. I ate, I ate slept, thought it, drank it, everything, racing. So I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, let me just go follow my childhood dream and uh, drive race cars for a living. Let that be the platform, you know, for, for, that you use me by. And uh, the Lord said this to me. He said, spoke to me very clearly and said, no, I've called you. So I said, Lord, you have to do something in me. And I began, I began to cry out to the Lord. And, you know, I did not know, I did not know how it was going to happen. You know, you never know how it's going to happen. I, I just knew that God needed to do something in me, and I sought him with all my heart. And, and one day, a couple weeks later, I'm heading to a meeting um, <clears throat> to go to a, a Holy Ghost service, with Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen, and as I'm walking to stand in line, I, I see a gentleman that I knew, and Pastor Rodney was with him. And, um, well, it was 1988, in 19, January, 8, January 1988. of 1998. 88. Yeah, 1988. And, um, <clears throat> and so uh, and there was immediate connection because he's, he was, um, he, after he came to South Af from South Africa, came to Kentucky, and he was based out of the church um, that I got saved in and um, and so obviously we had a connection there and um, then he preached He preached the following Sunday at the church and when he preached there was something different and Of course, I've been i had been for you know for years just sitting you know under a, the, Some incredibly anointed individuals and but when he spoke and he spoke I still remember what he preached on he spoke on the coming revival but when he spoke about it <clears throat> every word was full of fire every word that he spoke was full of power and I felt something in me and and I remember saying to myself I need to be with this guy and and some series of events happened that you know his daughter was in the hospital and I you know went with him to the hospital and there in the city of faith and and um, so we had that connection then here's what happened though so a, a few months later I got married and um the pastor called me. The pastor said, he said, he, he called me, he called me Ricky. He said, Ricky, I want you to come back and work for me. He said, I need somebody I can trust. He said, I want you to come. This is a big church. I mean, yeah, it was about 5,000 member church. And matter of fact, Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken was a member of the church. And um, <laughs> so he said, I need somebody I can trust. Will you come and, and help me? He said, look, I'll, uh, I, I need you to be my right hand man. And so I said, okay, I'll come. And so my wife and I, we got rid of everything we had, and we, we drove through the night on a Monday night. We drove to Louisville, Kentucky, and we get in on Monday night, and Tuesday morning he died. And uh, he didn't tell anybody he hired me. 
And uh, <laughs> so I was, uh, but you know, here's the thing, but I want you to look at something here. Here's what hunger does. See, God hears your cry. God, he understands something. God hears your cry. And God didn't actually want me working for him, but God just used him to get me out of where I was at, to get me back to Louisville so I can hook up with Pastor Rodney again. And actually, when I went back and he died, I actually, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, did, did, I just did what every Christian does. What do you know, what does Christians do when they're discouraged? They go to a Christian bookstore. And <laughs> that's what I did. I, I was going into, I went into this Christian bookstore, you know, trying to find a book, what to do when the pastor offers you a job and he dies, you know. But, <laughs> and uh, as I was walking out, as I was walking out of the bookstore, Pastor Roddy was actually walking in. And um, I, I wasn't discouraged. No, he wasn't discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't discouraged. I was the discouraged one. And uh, to make a long story short, I'm just showing you what, because I cried out to God and, and I was so hungry, but I'm just showing you how the Lord, how the Lord does things and how he arranges things. And he arranged this whole thing for me because I was so hungry for him because I said, God, I need you. I need you to touch me. You have to do something in me. You have to do something in me. I just didn't know at the time that God uses individuals and, and um, God... God brought me through all that journey to hook up with Pastor. And at the time, though, but I remember back when, you know, when he spoke at the service just uh, at, uh, at Raymond just a few months before that. And I, I remember what I felt when he spoke. And so now I had the opportunity. So I said to him, I said, look, wherever you go, I'm coming. He said to me, he said, I can't pay you. But I said, I'm, what I'm after, money can't buy. And, but out of the generosity of his heart, listen, this is the most generous man I've ever met, I promise you. Actually, I had such a poverty mentality, and it was because of being around him that got me set free from that. And, um, and which is, to be honest with you, was, is, is the church in general. Really, the church has such a, such, a, such a flea market, garage sale, dollar store mentality, and that's one of the problems that has to be broken. And, but I had it. <laughs> and, um, and, and trust me, you're not, you're not going to last very long around this man with that type of thinking because it, you'll either leave or that'll leave, one of the two. And um, I wasn't leaving, so it had to leave. <laughs> and, uh, and it did, trust me, it did. And, um, but I remember, I remember when, when the revival first broke out, nothing was happening with me. Nothing at all happened. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing everybody get touched. I'm seeing the fire of God fall on people. I'm seeing people, I'm seeing people go into trances for days. Well, I'm seeing from city to city, and you in all the meetings, and he'd even come to me and he said, "Look, maybe I'm not saved." Isn't that right? I did actually. To be honest with you, before the Lord touched me, I think I got saved like 16 times. But I. <laughs> He started coming in the altar call. Uh, no, I, I what are people going to think? I arrive at the church. I tell the pastor, this is my right-hand man. I give an altar call. He's the first person in the altar call. I go, oh, my God. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and uh, not, it's not counting the times that I would be in the hotel room on my knees. Lord, save me. And... Um, <laughs> No, but I didn't know what to think because I'm not getting anything. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting anything. So I said, I said after watching, watching this, I said, how come? I said, to, said to Pastor Rodney, I said, how come I'm not getting anything? And he said to me, he said, well, you got to get hungry. And I'm like, get hungry. I mean, I'm following him around the, the country. I'm driving a little 1988 Ford Tempo. He's in his van. I'm in my little Ford Tempo. It didn't even have cruise control. No air conditioning. No air conditioning. I can't even put the seats back because they're full of suitcases and only one of them's mine. But anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> my wife's not here tonight, so uh, <laughs> and <laughs> she might be watching though. And uh, <laughs> so I'm like hungry. I, I am Next hungry. Week. Next week. <laughs> Next week. You got work to do. <laughs> well, I, I said I am hungry, and um, so he said, "Well, you got to get hungrier." Now, I, I didn't, I thought, I didn't know where to put that, but I, you know what's amazing is I watch people today come to me and they say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. How do I get a touch from heaven? I said, you got to be hungry. He said, I am hungry. I said, we'll get hungry. And I see this look on their face, and I, it must be the same look I had. 
But the reality, and I can know what they're thinking because I thought it. But here's the reality is you have to get hungry. And you have to get hungrier. I understand he has to be everything. The Bible said he gave us a promise. He said in Jeremiah 29, he said, if you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. God's not a liar. God gave, actually one translation says, I will allow you to find me. God said this, if you seek me, if you seek me with all your heart, that means you put everything else to the side and he's the only thing you go after. He said, you'll find me. And that's what I did. And after my goodness, it must have been eight months. I, I can't remember how long it was. I remember we were, we were in, in um, we just came back from Oklahoma, and so it's in December, and I said to Pastor Rodney, I said, so where are you going next? He said, well, I'm going down to Daytona Beach, Florida. And I said, well, I didn't have no money. I didn't have to, I had $35. And um, so in my mind, I said, well, where are we going next? And he said, well, we're going to go up to Apollo, Pennsylvania. So I said in my head, I said, well, look, I'll just stay in Kentucky because you got to come back through and I'll just hook up with you and go to Pennsylvania. And he said, fine. And so after he left, the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said, go to Daytona Beach, Florida. Go with him. I've been with him now for all these eight months. I haven't not gone anywhere. And the Lord said, go. I said, oh, I don't have no money. The Lord said, go. And here's hunger. Here's what I said to my wife. I said, hon, the Lord, we have to go. And the Lord said, if I seek him with all my heart and search for him with everything in me, I'll find him. He'll allow me to find him. I said, we're going to go. I don't know why. In, the mind, listen, in my mind, it doesn't make sense. In the natural, it doesn't make sense. But if you're only going to go by what makes sense, you're going to miss out on God, I promise you. And I said to my wife, I said, we'll drive. A, a, it's, we got $35. We'll drive until we run out of gas, and then we'll hitchhike. <laughs> That's what I said to her. We'll have to, we, but the Lord said, go to Daytona, and we have to go. That's how hungry we were. After eight months of not feeling nothing, I didn't feel anything. I mean, listen, for eight months, I felt absolutely nothing. But I knew I had to go. And that's eight months, two meetings a day. Yeah, almost. I remember about 52 meetings a month, really. I mean, it's just day in, day out, day in, day out. Every, I mean, the only day off was Saturday. We was traveling sometime. I remember one time we left Oklahoma and traveled two meetings a day. We left Oklahoma, and we drove 22 hours nonstop to Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. And that's how it was for eight months. Took a shower and ran on the platform. Exactly. And so we, so... I said that to my wife, and my wife said, well, let's, let's do it. And so I said, okay, well, let, I'm, let's go by. I went to my grandparents' house, and, and uh, long story short, she gave me some money. So we had enough money for, to get gas to, to um, Daytona Grandma. Beach, Florida. And uh, <laughs> so we get down to Daytona Beach, Florida, and I remember we'd go up to the, his hotel room and there for a while, and then we went down to the beach, and my wife says, laying on the beach, and I remember I'm looking out at the ocean, and I'm thinking, Lord, it's been eight months. I felt nothing. You know, I'm just, what is my life? <laughs> Type thing. And all of a sudden, I feel this pat on the back. It startled me. And I turned around, and all of a sudden, it was Pastor Rodney. And he was up in his room, and the Lord spoke to him, and the Lord said, come tell me. And here's what he spoke to me. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that you've passed the test. I didn't even know I was being tested. <laughs> I think this is the first test ever passed. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I remember, <laughs> and I remember that week. <laughs> I remember that week. Still nothing happened, but here's what happened. We drove from there to Apollo, Pennsylvania. And I remember when Apollo, Pennsylvania, and as it was every service, I'm, I promise you, listen, it, 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 it hasn't, obviously it hasn't changed, but the first eight months that I was with him, I promise you, every service, I'm telling you, it's like it is now. I mean, it's just so electrifying. You can walk in. It's like you, you can cut out the glory of God. I mean, just with chunks of blah. I mean, it's just you walk into the building and you just step right into the glory of God. And, but here's the thing that people don't know is that actually it wasn't just that way in the meetings. Outside of the meetings, some of the most incredible things I've seen, especially with him, are things that's happened outside of the meetings. 
This is not just something that goes on just in church. No, this is something that's 24 hours a day. Everywhere, everywhere we go, I mean, it happens. The glory of God's there. I can't tell you the times I've been with him. I remember one time we was coming back from, from actually it was an, um, another city. We flew, got on the airplane. I remember we got on the airplane. I was with him. And we got on the airplane. And as soon as we got on the airplane, I remember that I watched him because I was behind him. He, this, the, um, the stewardess bumped into him. But when she did, the power of God hit him. I'd have watched it, and I watched on the, on the plane, there up there in the first class section, the glory of God was that the, the stewardess couldn't even function. She couldn't even, every time she'd come around, she'd just laugh uncontrollably. No, I, I remember watching this one guy. He's, he's watching the stewardess. He's got the paper. He's reading the paper. And I remember she came to him, tried to see if she can serve him with a drink. And he pulled his paper down, looked at it, and goes, no, like that, and stuck his paper back up. He didn't know what to think, but the glory of God was on. And I remember when she, she was getting off the plane, she said to him, I, what was that? I, I, I needed that. I hadn't experienced that in my life. I mean, it was just, but what I'm saying, the point I'm making is this. It's not just something that happens in church, and that's where people miss it. Now, understand something. This has to get in you. It has to become a part of you. And when you have an encounter with God, and that's the thing especially ministers need to understand. Your ministry is not your notes. It's not your notes. It's not your sermon. Your ministry is what's on the inside of you. And when it's on the inside of you, everywhere you go, guess what? It will, it will be manifested if you allow it and not stop it. And so that's the thing that touched me the most is that not just seeing what's happened in the meetings, but saw to see what was happening outside of the meetings. And so we're in, we're in the service and nothing's happening to me. Nothing's happening. And uh, <laughs> <Whew. laughs> so I, 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 I remember that night going back to the house we were staying at. <laughs> Thinking about that meeting that night, how glorious it was. And I remember it was Wednesday night. Wednesday, it was Tuesday night, but this was now the next morning. <laughs> that was Wednesday night that I remember in the meeting. That was Tuesday night, but now Wednesday morning. <laughs> Shoot. I can tell you, I'm doing everything I can just to stand here now. And my whole body's on fire right now. And, and, and so Tuesday night, and then, and then, then, and then, 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 <laughs> Tuesday night, then, then, I mean, yeah, Tuesday night, then, <laughs> and then, <we> <laughs> all right, then Wednesday morning, I'm, I'm, so I don't even know what I was going to tell you about Wednesday morning, but <laughs> Wednesday, so anyway, we're at the service. <laughs> we go to the meeting. Well, it was the service, so we go. <laughs> okay, and whoo, glory, my mosh. And and <clears throat> now listen to me. Now, so we're there, and and what well, what well, we're there? Him and I are there. And, 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 well, elders were there too, but, <laughs> and, 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 so, so now, well, who, ma, now, we, and, okay, now listen, now, so, I gotta tell you this, because it's important, because, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, phew, but now, but, oh, Rama Sufrane Sukosande, um, so, 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 pastor, so he gets up, and he's, you know, opens his Bible, and so he looks over to me, and I, 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 
So he looks over at me, and he never does that before. And, um, and so he said, Richard, come testify. I was like shocked. I was like, what for? <laughs> I had nothing to say. <laughs> I, I'm a dead preacher. I had nothing. <laughs> I've been with the meetings for eight months and never felt anything. I have a miracle ministry with no miracles. What do you want me for? And we've been there for, I've been with you for eight months, and in eight months' time, he never called me up to say anything. And I was shocked, because I'm figuring, I mean, he knew I was dead, so why? So, <laughs> no, honestly, I mean, why have a dead man get up? I mean, it's like dead men walking, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so he looks and he said, Richard, come up. I'm like, what for? So I shook my head no, which you don't, you listen, let me tell you something. Uh, this Pastor Rodney, listen, he doesn't take no for an answer. And I shook my head no, and he looked at me like, come here. I said, I don't have anything to say. I shook my head no. And then he raises his voice a little strange and said, come here now. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do the nice, you know, what, all, most, what most preachers do. Just do the, the, the nice, you know, religious thing and get up and smile and put on my religious face. And the Lord is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but I can tell you... <laughs> Something, something, something happened. Marco, oh my shanda, but almost something happened because when I stood up, I stepped into what was there. But let me tell you, the very thing that was there that morning is the very thing that is here tonight. I feel it like I felt it that morning. And all I can tell you, ha, I, I, I don't know if I can tell you. I haven't been able to tell you that was 1970. Oh, not what well, well, wasn't 70. It was... <laughs> No, when no. was it? <laughs> 90. 90. 90. 90. No. Jeez. 90. <laughs> 90. I don't know what's se se I don't know what's set. Who cares about 70? 90. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, oh, shukurapa. I can tell you. All I can tell you is this. I haven't been able to, I haven't, I promise you. I have, I promise you. Listen, I promise you. I have not in, in how no many years is that? No. I don't, how many years is that? <laughs> I, I didn't pass those tests in school. How many years were that? How many years is that? This is 1990, what is it? <laughs> what? 24. <laughs> 24 years, I promise you. Let me tell you how real it is. That's why when people come and tell me they've been touched and, you know, then you, you, they try to tell you a year later, it's like, really? No, 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 no. When God really touches you, I can just tell you for me, it's been 24 years. And I promise you, I have never been able to share the whole thing. Actually, tonight's probably one of the most clear deliveries I've ever heard. <laughs> And that's the truth. Because I haven't gotten into yet what happened, but I even tried to write it down. I am promise you, I even tried to, I've tried to write it down. And when I try to write it on paper, I begin to have the same thing happen. But all I can tell you, it's real. Is that morning when I stood up, I stood up into the glory of God. And when I walked to, 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 to this thing, the 
Mr. Fart. I was not gonna tell you is that. That what he just said. Fart. Ha I've never been the same. And and, and 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 if I try to tell you, I'm, I'm, I promise you, I'm not gonna be able to tell you. But whew, it's real. And now you've been all over the world. Forty-three nations of the world. Crusades, miracles, signs and wonders. You know, it just all I can tell you is that everywhere we go, the same thing happens. The same thing happens. He's real. Let me tell you something. He's so real. The glory of God is so real. Listen, we are Pentecostal people. Listen, we are Pentecostal people. And it's time that the fire of Pentecost be turned up to maximum capacity. It's time that we begin to act like and do what we are. We are Pentecostal folks. And Pentecostal folks are baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere we go, People should understand and they should see that we're marked by fire. If you're not marked by fire, then there's something wrong. But here's the good news. The fire is here tonight. And the very thing that changed my life in 1990, <laughs> 24 years ago, I feel it just like I feel it right now. It, listen, it hasn't waned. It's just gotten stronger. I'm telling you, that same fire is here. You do not have to leave here tonight without it. Listen to me. You do not have to leave here tonight without it. If you're a minister, if you're a pastor here tonight, you do not have to leave here without it. Hallelujah. And, wow. Did you want me to try to tell them? But... No, <laughs> I can't, but whew. hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what's going to happen. You, I know, you, I'm you, not. But you I can't tell. I, I think, think you did a good job yeah, telling. Probably the best in 20 yeah, years. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, Brother Richard. If you're passing, you, you want him to come at crusades. That's what he does. I tell you, God's using him in a, in a, in a phenomenal way. Amen. And many people got touched and walked away, but he hasn't. He just stays constant, hungry for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew. Tonight I'm going to pray for everybody here. Needs a touch from God. You picked the right service. This passage of scripture is so precious. I always, no matter where I go in the world, share it. Matthew 26, and I read verse 6. Now when Jesus came back to Bethany, was in the house of Simon the leper. A woman came to him with an alabaster flask of very precious perfume. She poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, For what purpose is all this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a large sum, and the money given to the poor. In just a little while, we'll receive the evening offering. Let me just say this. There have been times that I've got up to share on giving, and somebody stood up and said, what about the poor? Just like this. And I told the gentleman, I said, this is not about the poor right now. This is about Jesus. This is about the gospel. I said, sit down and shut up. I said, we take care of the poor. We feed the poor. We feed the needy. We're helping people all the time. And there's a time for that. But then there's a time to worship God with your giving. And I said, sir, if you want to see what we do for the poor, I can show you, but bring me your checkbook. Let me see what you do for the poor. 
So, of course, that wiped the smile off his face, and he sat down. And a few minutes later, he evacuated the building. So, yeah, this woman comes. It's the house of Simon the leper. She has this alabaster flask, a very precious perfume. And we know, if you study the other Gospels, you see that it was costly perfume. Not a cheap perfume. It was equivalent to one year's salary. You think about the average income for a year, and you go buy perfume for that, and then you walk right in and pour it on the head of Jesus, that's enough to cause a stir. The only problem, the people that were getting upset about it were his very own disciples. So the disciples saw it and say, they were indignant, saying, for what purpose is all this waste? Well, it wasn't waste for the woman, it was worship. I mean, surely she knew how much it cost her. If you buy something, then you know what it costs her. If you feel to pour it on the head of Jesus, that's your choice. Amen. Can you say amen? What amazes me is that some people's worship will be considered a waste by others. Well, that's just a waste. But it's not. It's worship. For this perfume might have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. Jesus, fully aware of this, said to them, why do you bother the woman? In other words, you would have expected Jesus to say, that's right, woman, please don't waste any more of this costly perfume. Stop right now. Judas, you're in charge of my treasury. I need you to take this now and go down to the marketplace, sell the balance, and then take the money and give it to the poor. And everybody said, amen, hallelujah. Isn't it just wonderful? But he didn't. He said, why do you bother the woman? She has done a noble, praiseworthy, and beautiful thing to me, for you always have the poor among you. But you'll not always have me. In pouring this perfume on my body, she's done something to prepare me for my burial, which is something we'll get to in just a moment. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news, this good news of the gospel is preached, in the whole world, what the woman has done will be told in memory of her. So that's why I read the scripture. People want to know, how come you share this every week? Because Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached, what the woman has done will be told in memory of her. So this is proof to you that I'm preaching the gospel. You don't hear people preaching this. But I preach it all the time because I'm fulfilling the very words of Jesus. He said, wherever the gospel is preached, what the woman has done will be told in memory of her. These are the very words of Jesus, and they're being fulfilled here tonight. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? We are reading from the inscription. I mean, I'll just read this every week just to fulfill the words of Jesus. Say this off to me. Wherever the gospel is preached, in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told in memory of her. Now, if you look right after that, then one of the 12 apostles, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest, and he said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? And they weighed out for him 30 pieces of silver. Amplified Bible says about $21.60. And from that moment, he sought a fitting opportunity to betray him. So he, he was provoked by the woman's worship, and he went and sold Jesus out. There's nothing like money to reveal the hearts of people. Money will show what's going on on the inside. The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be also. The moment you touch the money, you find the motive. He got so angry... Then he went out and sold Jesus. And when you see what he sold Jesus for, it was 21 bucks. Can you imagine? You know what? You're either going to worship the Lord or you're going to sell him out. You either worship him or you'll sell him. But I want you to see, let's just go into that house of Simon the leper. This house that was filled with people. 
Leprosy, as you know, has a smell. What does leprosy represent? It represents sin. Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead, was also there. Well, well, death also has a smell. But the perfume of the woman's worship filled the room. The fragrance filled the room. And it took out the fragrance of sin and death. That's what worship does. Can you say amen? And when you take costly perfume and you put it in the dose that he she put it on him. She poured it on him. You can't put costly perfume on someone without getting it on yourself. The fragrance filled the room, covered Jesus, got on her. So what does that tell me? In our worship, we're going to get blessed. And in our worship, others are going to get blessed. Can you say amen? You, you might just start off just worshiping Jesus, but the fragrance is going to get on you, get on him, get on everybody else. Can you say amen? But then he said something, and this is very profound, that he said, in pouring this perfume on my body, she's done something to prepare me for my burial. So watch this. Just a few days later, Jesus is being whipped by the Roman soldiers. And if you know anything about the Roman scourging, they used the cat of nine tails. When they would... When, of course, they, they, you know, when they hit that thing and it hit your back, it cut into the back. And when they pulled it back, pieces of flesh went through the air. And they lashed him. But now remember, this costly perfumes all over him. And I can just picture the Roman soldiers there as they beating him, as they lashing him. And the, and the blood and, and, this, and, this, and the pieces of flesh flying through the air. If you know anything about human blood, it has a, like a metallic smell to it. You know what I'm talking about? But this was different. As they were whipping him, there was a different, there was a, there was a strange fragrance that filled the air. I could just see one of those hardened soldiers thinking, I've smelt this before. Where have I smelt this before? This smells like the lily of the valley. This smells like the rose of Sharon. And we're still this woman's offering. The fragrance that was on Jesus. It hadn't gone away. So that when they came to take him off of the cross and to wrap him in the burial garments and bind him up, that already she had prepared him for his burial. That's what giving is. When you take of your gifts and you pour it and you give it to the Lord, you're pouring it on his head. And the fragrance of the gospel is the aroma of the gospel is spread. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I, I, one of the things I'm looking forward to is when we get to the other side, I want to go meet this woman. I, I want to say, listen, I want to just thank you. Well, what you did, I got to talk about it every single week. And I, I thought, I think it's only right and fitting that we sit down and have a little chat here. Just that, Thank you for doing that. Because that's so sort of touched my life. Here I am thousands of years later telling the story of what you did. Now you might be here tonight and you say, uh, Brother Rodney, I would love to have done that. I, I just, if only I could have poured the perfume on the head of Jesus. Well, guess what? You can. Someone says, well, how? I don't understand. He's not here. No, he's not. But the Bible does say, if you've done it to these, at least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. So the bottom line is this. When we get involved in the gospel, when we get involved with the sowing of our seed into the gospel with a pure heart, with a pure motive, the Bible tells it's a fragrant odor of an offering that goes up and God smells the aroma of our offering. You can read about it in Philippians. A fragrant odor.
That's, That's what's happening, happening right now. The Lord's pouring oil on you. The first week I preached this was the last week of the month of February in 1991. The power of God hit my mother on the second row doing the offering. And just like Brother Richard can't tell, my mother still to this day can't tell what happened. She tries to tell the power of God overwhelms her because Jesus poured perfume on her. She said, as you were talking about the woman pouring perfume, she said, I felt like this hot oil just come right on me. And that's what's happening to you right now. In fact, the matter is she took her alabaster box. Something that was precious to her. And she broke it. And she poured it in worship. It was costly. It was so costly, people got mad. And they said it was a waste. The Lord told me years ago, he said, until people come to the place when they take the alabaster box and they break it, where they take that thing, when you break it, that means it can never be put back together again. It's done. It's broken. You, 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 you can, when you break something, it, it can't be mended. It's, it's, it's going to be emptied. It's going to be poured out. When something happens and you break your alabaster box, You'll never, ever go back. You reach a point of no return. You reach a point of total commitment. It's one thing to just take a little bit out. It's another thing to break it, to just break it and pour it on his head and let the fragrance fill the room. And that fragrance is the anointing. That which money cannot buy. And wherever that anointing goes, it takes out the smell of sin and death. And people come one way and leave another way. Everything about them changes. They walk, they talk. They're rising up, they're lying down, they're coming in, they're going out. Everything about their home changes.
And what's so powerful about it, and people don't even realize that Jesus said, it's, it's the gospel. He included, <laughs> he included in the gospel, yet you don't hear people talking about it. Why? If, if Jesus said, wherever the gospel preached in the whole world, what this woman done will be totally memory of her. Why aren't more people talking about it? Maybe because they haven't had a revelation of what it means to break your alabaster box. Somebody said, well, if you, if you can preach this, it's going to sound like you just want our money. Please keep your money. I don't need your money. This is about your breakthrough. It's not about your money. If whether you break your alabaster box to year in this place tonight or, or never, but you're going to have to break it at some point. God assigned me to get breakthroughs in people's lives. I, I don't know any other way to get a breakthrough other than through the word of God. In actual fact, there's no other way. You can hype it up all you want to. You can come with all the mumbo jumbo. You can come with all the motivational speeches you want to. But something happens when you break your alabaster box because it's, it's where God's touching your treasure. It's where God comes and touches your heart. And once you break it, there's no going back. It's done. It's done. It's over. This, you've, you've gone to a point of no return. You can never get back to where that thing has a hold of you. It's impossible. You've already broken it. What's the stronghold in many people's lives is what they possess. It's a fact. The number one problem in America is people's possessions, their love of money, things that they have. And God doesn't, God doesn't have a problem with you having things. He has a problem with things having you. So when things have you and things control you. And don't tell me it's because people don't have the money. I know people that one man came to me as six million dollars. He said, I, he didn't, this is cash. He didn't know what to do with it because the banks only secured 250,000. So he had to split. I don't know how many accounts he had spread all over the place trying to save his six million dollars. And was a nervous wreck. He said, I can't sleep at night. I'm trying to monitor my accounts to see that everything remains safe. I thought, you're in prison, bro. You just built yourself a $6 million prison. This thing has you. I told him, I said, I tell you what, finance my church property and I'll pay you the interest on it. Then you know it's a secure investment. I'm not going anywhere. I said, we, we, <laughs> we, we yeah, we're not going anywhere. And then he wouldn't because he was afraid that in case he financed it, God might tell him to give it to me so that he wouldn't. He went, he went out and he invested, in, he invested in the stock market, which then took a dive and lost half of his money. He couldn't, he couldn't do it because he, his possessions were great. He couldn't part with it. So something happens when God speaks to a person and he takes them to that place and they say, I'm going to take my alabaster box and I'm going to break it. It's, it's like that thing loses its hold over you. Never, never again to dominate you. You become master over it. It's not master over you. You're master over it. And the only Lord in your life is Jesus. Can you say amen? Not your money, not your possessions, not your treasure. If I could take you on a, on a quick world tour and show you riches that are just dying because the people have passed away and the estates are now being auctioned off and you see hundreds of millions of dollars of treasure that's just gone because people hoarded it and just held on to it and even the kids didn't know how to use it they squandered it all and there's nobody that believes more in blessing than me so I'm not talking poverty I don't believe in poverty that's a curse but I also don't believe in anything having us he must have us can you say amen because he is our source and he's, supply, he's our supply. So when this woman came and she broke the alabaster box, a very precious perfume, and the fragrance filled the room. You can just imagine a costly perfume. If you put a cheap perfume on, it goes like in a half an hour. I mean, ladies know what I'm talking about. But if you put a costly perfume, like even a day later, like even 36 hours later, you could still smell the fragrance of that perfume. 
And this must have been some real strong stuff because Jesus said she's doing to prepare me for my burial. And then he said, this is so powerful, I'm including it into the gospel. This is part of the gospel. Her worship, her pouring the oil is, is the gospel. And we read from that memorial today. And let me, let me close this little teaching with this. I can't tell you how many people around the world sat in one of these meetings and God spoke to them to break the alabaster box. And they came to me five years later and said, I was in a meeting and you preached on the woman, the alabaster box. And I broke my alabaster box. Pastor, I've never looked back. And then you start hearing the testimonies of the breakthroughs that God gave them in their life. It was like they came to a point and then suddenly it was like God catapulted them. Broke them into another dimension in their ministry, in their businesses, in their, in their finances. It was something, it was, like, it was like a watershed. It was like a, a, the river began to flow. The blessing of heaven began to flow. It was like the enemy was holding them back. Now I'll tell you, I'm going to just speak by the Spirit of God. There's people here that God's talking to. Somebody said, how do you know? I've been doing this a long, long time. I travel around the world, 50 countries. I've spoken the word of the Lord like this in many different places. And when I'm speaking, you can feel the battle going on. You can feel people arguing, fighting, whatever. And so I come against that right now. I come against that, that spirit that holds people back that's stingy that's stingy tight wad scrooge mentality i break it i break that poverty stinking poverty devil in this county i break it i come against it i come against it i pull it off of the body of christ i put it off of god's people i break it I break it in the name of Jesus. I come against you. I break it. I break that embarrassment about the blessing of heaven. I break it. I break it off you. I break it in the name of Jesus. I come against it. I break it. I come against it. I break it now. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it. You will not be held captive any longer. You will not be held captive in your mind and your way of thinking anymore. It's like in the natural. You're not be, you have to please the Joneses. You're not trying to impress the first church of the Frigidaire down the road. Or trying to become acceptable. I break it. I break it. I break it. In the name of Jesus. I break it. I come against it. And I break it. I resist it. I come against it. Over the whole of this county. Over the whole of Polk County. I break it now. I break it. In the name of Jesus. I break it. I break the fear in this area. I break it. I break it. I break it in Jesus name. You will not be held back anymore. You will not be held back anymore. You will not be held back. No. This is whole thing being lifted off people's minds even now. Break it. Come against lack. I break it. I break it. I break the spirit of poverty. I break it. I break that mindset. I break it in the name of Jesus. Whew. There's things God wants to do through you. There's things he wants to do through you. This thing holds you back, holds you back in every area. 
Break it! Break it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. I feel it. I can feel it now. Yep, 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 yep. I feel it. There it is. There it is right now. I feel it. That's it. That's it. There it is. There it is. Woo. Yeah, the, the, the water's starting to flow now. That's it. That's it. Took a few sticks of dynamite then. But there it is. The river's starting to flow now. The river's starting to flow. It's a breakthrough that takes place in your heart and then just floods your mind. And you, you never look back. You never look back. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, you've got to understand, I haven't asked for anything. I mean, we're going to receive an offering in a little bit, but I haven't asked for nothing. I didn't tell anybody to give anything, nothing. I'm, I'm dealing with something in the spirit here. There's no gimmick here. We did nothing. I'm dealing with the attitude of the heart. Break it! You see, here's the thing. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know what your alabaster box is. So <laughs> it's none of my business, really. It's you and Jesus. It's you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord. But if you think you're just coming and putting something down here to give to man, then you don't understand what's happening right here. When you come and put something down here, you're pouring it on the head of Jesus. That's the way this thing works. That's the way it works. Jesus. Jesus. Well, just follow the Lord. Just follow the Lord. Just follow the Lord. Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Us just pass out the envelopes. Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Just follow the Lord. Nobody's under any pressure. There's nothing. It's you and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. Supernatural breakthroughs. In your ministry. In your church. In your business. In every realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus.
Father, I thank you for breakthroughs in the life of each and every person in this place. As you speak to the hearts of people, whatever they do, they do between you and, and them, Lord. And even as they break the alabaster box, whatever you tell them to do, let the fragrance fill the room. Let the fragrance not only fill the room, let the fragrance go forth across the nation that they'll even smell the aroma from this night service. See what you're feeling yeah, in this place tonight, what, what fell in you earlier as the kids were ministering, as Brother Richard was sharing. That's heaven's best. Well, you listen to me. That's heaven's best. Heaven pours heaven's best on God's people. And Lord, we bring you our best. We worship you. We worship you. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Jesus. Oh, the anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on me that anointing is raining on me the anointing of the lord breaks the yoke of bondage the anointing of the lord sets the captives free the anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on me. 
that anointing is raining on me. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on me. That anointing is raining on me. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert that anointing is raining on me that anointing is raining on me oh hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord Mm. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, Raman Kalifra Besta Prefano, the Deliver Besta Papa, Balifa Nole, Midor or Eri Easter Par, Tande de Rosta, Tande de Rosta, Cari East, the Pre Erita de Brondo. Send the beast, the parry east of roar, it elevendo. Sebravon, do don, do don, do don, do don, do don, do my ingele was sapaya. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Breakthroughs. the perfect animal about his
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just, I just keep having this uh, over, over my spirit that, that God's going to make people here, even in the service tonight, He's going to cause you to be a sign and a wonder. In, in in this area of provision. I mean, people are going to be shocked. They might be criticizing you now, but they, they, they're going to rub their eyes and go, what in the world? How? On paper, it doesn't even add up. It's going to be a quick work. It's going to be a quick work. Hallelujah. 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 Let me actually tell you what's happening here tonight. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being released right now for the kingdom of heaven. I'm just telling you. Remember, you, 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 you were in the meeting on the 26th. You remember that Saturday night at 9.32. Remember when we said you, you were in the service where we declared it. You remember? Remember that? You remember you were there on the 26th of July, 2014? You remember? Somebody said, well, I don't really believe it. Don't worry. You'll never see it. It'll never be your way. <laughs> you, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Everybody else, you excluded. Oh, yeah. It's like the person said, I don't believe in miracles. Don't worry. You'll never have one. Somebody said, I don't believe in the joy. No, we can see that.
Hallelujah. The, the ramifications of the eternal impact of a meeting like what takes place in us, I've already seen. I've already seen it over the last 20 years, traveling around to find people that were in a meeting just like this, where we spoke the word of the Lord and you come back and they have a company that covers the whole nation. And God's doing some amazing things for them. So I'm telling you right now, I'm not, I'm not telling you hoping, I'm telling you what, how God works. And it's not just the laying on of hands. It's something that happens on the inside. And then you lay hands on that and the combination of the two. And watch what God does. I prayed over a young man. I mean, this is stuff making your, your jaw drop on. I prayed over a young man. And he was on the floor and God gave him the name of a church. He said, you'll start this church. Today, that church is all over the world. And I went, they, they asked me to come and do their national conference. And I stood up and he said, I just want you to know, it's in this man's meeting back in 1995, I was on the floor. And God told me to start this church. And he said, look what God's done. He was on the floor in a meeting where people were leaving because it was too radical. But it's in that radical meeting where the power of God, where God was touching him and speaking to him. And today, they, they, their churches in major cities all around the world, thousands of people. Some say, well, how come they're not connected to you? Because I, I, you, that's not how it works. Are you listening to me? We, we purposed a long time ago, we weren't going to build no denomination. There's people affiliated with us, but they need to follow the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. And build a second Vatican. You just need people to follow the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? amen. And you watch what's going to happen. Tonight is historic. I'm just going to say that to you. Tonight, you look back on the 26th day of the month of July, 2014, at 9.32, 9.33, 9.34, 9.35, and you say, something happened. But this is in the realm of provision. Can you say amen? And you watch, and we'll hear the testimonies. Glory to God. You believe that? I believe it. I receive it. I grabbed it myself. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want Brother Raymond to come. Just bless us and ushers, you can take care of him here. And then I'm going to pray for everybody here tonight. By the laying on of hands. Amen.
the peace that endureth Thy no dear presence to cheer and to guide Swing for today and bright home for tomorrow Blessing thousand beside oh great is thy faithfulness oh great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see and Lord Lord unto me. Come on, sing it with me. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And Lord, As our dear brother was saying, the Lord told me, he said, tell the people that they need to exercise their faith to receive what I have for them. Many have backed off because of circumstances or maybe you got an offense because you saw somebody else, another preacher do something and you pull back. I'm telling you, you actually hurt yourself. Ignore what is happening around about you. With a pure heart, exercise your faith and begin to speak it out and begin to decree and declare and watch what God is going to do. Watch. You'll see more happen in 12 months than most people see in 10, 20 years. I'm telling you right now. And I look down at you and the Lord says, it's time for your property now. I mean, how long have you been there pastoring now? It's time now. This thing has to break in Zurich. It has to break. It, it, it's, it's impossible for it to hold any longer. Come here, I want to pray with you, all, all three of you. Now, bring your daughter too. She can join you because she's active in the ministry. 30 years now. It's time for your property. Zurich houses some of the, the, the most richest banks, the, the most wicked banks that hold the wealth of nations. It's time that God's people get blessed. Can you say Amen. And that God put the property in you for your church and for your Bible school and for all the other things that you're supposed to do in the nation. It's time to move forward now. I tell you, I, I was walking along. He was singing that. The Lord said, tell him. He gave me the word for everybody, but he says, for you. It's time now. The very nature of your church. Is, is called the life of God. It's the life of God that's going to cause the release. It's the life of God. It's the life of God. It's the life of God, life of God that will cause the release. For the property to be released. see, we always think it's going to happen in a conventional way. We always think it's going to happen in a conventional way. You're going to have to go and find the property, get a loan, whatever. What if the Lord sends him to a key person? 
And God gives a man a miracle and he says, whatever you need. I'm telling you, it's the subtleties of God. You, you, can't, you can't think the conventional. You cannot think the conventional. It could be a property already built. Come on. I mean, he, he went skydiving yesterday. 18,000 feet. He said, I had a fear of heights. I said, you already broke a big giant. That's a big giant to break. To jump out of a plane, 18,000 feet. I said, what were you thinking before you, you jumped? He said, nothing. He said, I've learned to get those thoughts out of my head. And he said, we free fall for about a minute and a half. At 200 miles an hour. And then he said, we floated to the earth for eight minutes. So that's a breakthrough. So God give you the breakthrough in the natural, and you're going to have a breakthrough in the supernatural. I'm not telling everybody to go skydiving tomorrow, but I am telling you. The Lord will do stuff like that in the natural, and then something big is going to happen in, in, in the spiritual. Before we went to Madison Square Garden, I had a bull elephant charge me at six yards, and I, I, I took care of him. The words were, shoot or we dead. He's hanging on my wall. You saw the picture the other night. Amen. Said, How many know it's the difference between a squirrel and an elephant? Amen. Come here, young lady. Power goes all on you. Come. The Lord says, I've heard your cry. And it shall be even as you've asked me. Preach. It'll be even as you've asked of him. Hallelujah. Your mother has it, brother. She, she got it. The granny has it. Your granny has it. She has it, girl. Your mother's been praying this way. It's time now. Is that right, Mom? Yeah, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Ha. Hallelujah. Mother will get back to the church. Tell everybody in the church, whatever he said to you, do it. Amen. Come on, a breakthrough. <laughs> breakthrough on every side. Can you say amen? Come here, both of you. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to cry out, sister. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to cry out. It's okay to cry out. It's okay.
To, to the world, this is a mockery, but it's an upper room. I'm considered the lowest of the low to the religious world. I'm mocked. I'm lied about. I'm scoffed at. They close doors for me. They hinder me. But the Lord sends me another way. They can't stop us. He said they can't stop us. Hallelujah. They call us a fiasco. <laughs> But when they look again, when they look again and see what God's done, they won't be able to say anything about it. Because the Lord has hidden us in the cloud of his glory. And they have no clue what's coming. They don't know what's coming. And then when they look again, they're going to say, how in the world? How was that possible? It's holy glory. I said it. Just like the day a Pentecost is falling right now in this place, right here, right now. Ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. My God, my God,
Firepower. Firepower. Power to live right. Power to walk right. Power to do right. Power to pray right. Power to preach right. Power to go right. Woo. Breakthrough in Zurich. Melt the Swiss chocolate, oh God. Melt the Swiss chocolate. <laughs> Melt it, oh God. Melt it. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. I want you from the Czech Republic, come here quickly. Come here. Come. Come here. Come here. Fire! 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 Woo! That's it. Touch the Czechs. That right border, Poland. They're right near the Polish border there, these Czechs. Then right by your country.
Hey! I want to pray first for all those in the full-time ministry. And then we'll line up everybody after that. We'll lay hands on you tonight. So I want all those in the full-time ministry to stand, please. Pastor Eric, if you come help me, please. Standing behind anybody, you need to move over, please. Anybody standing behind anybody, you need to move over, Fire. please. Jesus. Just this section right now. Move out to your right. The ushers will move you here, and then you'll start making a line in the back. Fire. Those that desire prayer in this section, if you'll Jesus. stand up and go directly behind you, Jesus. you're going to make a line in the back of the sanctuary. I need a few ushers. Increase it. Fire. 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 Woo. Yeah. Fire. Fire. 
Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire. Fire of God right now. The fire of God right now. Fire. Yes, Lord. Fire. Fire of God right now. The 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 fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. 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 Oh, caparati. Oh, sapada. Fire. Jesus. Fire. 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 Take it. Fire. The fire of God right now. Fire of God right now. The 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 fire of God right now. Fire. Fire! 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 
Fire. Fire. Jesus. Jesus. Fire. 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 Touch. Fire. Take it. Let it go right through you. Fire. 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 
Fire, 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 fire. Jesus. Fire. 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 Jesus. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Now, Jesus, fire, Jesus, take it, take it. Fire, 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 fire. Fire! Fire! Mm. Fire. Fire is gone right now. Fire is gone right now. Jesus, 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 fire, fire, Jesus, 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 fire, 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 fire. 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 Touch him. Fire. 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 Touch. Jesus. Fire. 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 Fire, fire, fire. Jesus, fire, 
Fire. 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 Jesus. Fire. 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 Jesus. 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 Fire. Fire. Woo. Fire, fire. Jesus. And go home. Fire. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
Is that California? Who's that? Huh? It's a miracle. Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. You could say you got kicked in the head at a revival meeting by Balaam's ass. Thank you, Jesus.
and keep hearing that song go over and over about it's by David Ingalls about the prodigal son where he says I will arise and go home even the servants have plenty and that this is really the party that the, the, that the Lord throws for the prodigals to come home it's where he puts a ring on their finger puts a robe on their back shoes on their feet kills a wee fatted calf and they're singing and rejoicing in the house I mean people don't know the miracles I mean just with the two of you phenomenal miracles life changing miracles the people don't even know God can do that and look what he's done it's phenomenal only the Holy Ghost can do that so let me tell you what you see here does not come without a price it's very costly it's an alabaster box and it's been broken and it's poured out freely it's the best that I have it's precious perfume but it's very costly and it comes with a great price The fragrance is filling the room. Somebody said, what are you talking about? It's none of your business.
Bitch. Jesus. Touch him. Touch him. God. As you know, there's no ways we can end a meeting like this. I, I don't even try to. So all family worship center people, you be here in the morning time. Don't, don't stay away in the morning and sleep. You be here. And river people will see you at the river. Amen. Glory to God. Pastor Reggie already told me what he's preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you. We love you very much. <laughs>